So Steve, I don't claim to be an expert on oil pickups, but I'm fairly certain that this is bad. Yes, my professional opinion is it's really messed up. <laughs> and uh, I'm betting what happened is there's a little ferrule in here or there's a seal between these two. Mm -hmm. So either this nut has loosened up or uh, O-ring, whatever, I bet you it's gone. We won't know until we pull it apart, but mm. it, what happens is instead of sucking oil here, it sucks air here and aerates the oil. So you still get some oil through the engine, but you get so much air in it that it doesn't lubricate everything like it's supposed to. Anyway, yeah, I don't bet you. So this is what cost me thousands and thousands of dollars. Yep. That's incredibly irritating. So I guess the long and short of this is that this engine has had even more mechanical problems before its current 1400 hour mechanical problems. And somebody, I guess, ate a bearing or two and it was bad enough that they had to replace the caps and God knows what, if any, bearings or how many. And then they just plain and simple didn't wire stuff back together properly. Yes. Rage inducing, but at least we know. Ah! Oh, this doesn't weigh anything. Is this aluminum? This is aluminum. It appears to be some sort of metal. Whatever would I do with that, Steve? So Chuck was asking me, like, well, what's my honest opinion about the engine? I told him that one of the, uh, uh, the things that caught my eye is if you look on the inside of the engine, they've actually put this, it looks like paint, but it's actually a coating. And I don't know if this is a glyptol or glyptol or not, but you can't just paint the inside of an engine with normal paint because it just won't last. So what they do, they do this for two reasons. One is an oil repellent, so oil doesn't stick to the sides of the engine. It just all goes down to the bottom of the crankcase. That's why it looks so clean. Um, two, they do it because the porosity in the casting process, um, if it's really poor, this actually seals the inside. So far, everything on the engine is pretty beefy. I mean, everything's built like a tank. It's, it's built to last. Um, they use pretty good size. Um, uh, studs, not bolts, you know, and that's an, that's an additional cost. Built a lot more and a lot more um, uh, money goes, guys, gone into this engine than a normal, what you would expect to see on a four cylinder diesel engine, especially like a, I hate to say it, but like an American made motor or a Chinese made motor. And they, they skip all these steps to save a buck, you know, and it's pretty impressive so far. Cool. Doing a cross. What do people ever do before? <clears throat> Air tools, man. Do them crisscross. Do them crisscross? Yeah. Dude, I want if this thing comes out. There we go. I know they're, uh, they're cast iron. Got to drain that line. Yeah. But still, when you, you pull them off, you want to do them opposing. Opposing. I wonder what percentage of warranty claims Craftsman ever filled from screwdrivers that were actually related to the proper use of said screwdriver. Zero. <laughs> Steve was saying there's so much crap in between the cylinder heads that it's hard to get them off. So I got the engine out. To get the engine out was kind of a pain. We had to get a certain angle on the engine because this clutch assembly is so big that it hangs up inside the bell housing. So you have to have the engine perfectly tilted. Dude, one of my viewers, when I first got this tractor and revealed it on the show, they're like, yeah, those are okay machines, man, but the engines are pretty good and you couldn't rip the clutch out of this thing if you try. I don't want to take that as a challenge, but this thing is huge. It's like almost the size of two engine cylinders. Ah, one and a half. It's still pretty big. It's out. 
I got it. All right. It's all you, man. Dude, friggin' work. But, I mean, the good, or not good news, but <clears throat> personally, when I pull something apart, I don't feel that bad. If I pull it apart and I find a mechanical failure like this, it's out of my control, then I don't blame myself for it. I'm just like, it's just a matter of circumstance. It sucks, but, you know, mm. it is what it is. But if I forgot to put oil back in it or yes. filter on tight. You think that's or, worse? Yeah, to me, that's much worse because I beat myself up over that forever. There's not much you could have done about this. Yeah. <laughs> lucky, lucky. I don't even know what to say about that. Oh, that's rage inducing right there. That is rage inducing majorly. So it looks like a, is it just a tubing thing? Yeah, so it looks like a yeah. compression deal. So there's not much to go wrong in there, is there? No. If you guys ever watch like even the most basic how hydraulics work videos like I did and I recommend because it was really cool, you'll see it's literally just a gear fluid pump. That is all it is. Movie tractor time. Feel better now, thank you, Steven. Nice. You know, if only we had a specific tool made to exert huge amounts of downward pressure on jobs just like this. <laughs>